Go ahead. Welcome to Reaching Out. We've got an interesting message lined up for you today. We're going to talk about what's going on in the world. What's turning, what's, what's going on? What's really going on? We see violence of every sort going on. We see people being burned and killing and destroying, shootings and every imaginable thing. And you know, sometimes you wonder what on earth is going on. But then when you look at this, this the whole situation is unique because it encompasses the entire world. We've never had this condition before. So there's got to be a greater force than just a change in temperature or change in the social structure. Somebody got mad at somebody and they started a war. This thing has affected every country without fail. And it has caused untold suffering, not only in our country, but in every country around the world. Did God cause it? Does God cause the earthquakes that's going on? We're seeing in earthquakes increasing, not a great big increase, but they're increasing. We've seen natural disasters go on in the United States is looking, and Australia also is looking at the hottest temperatures ever in the history of keeping records. That is going to affect all of the soybeans, all of the corn, all of the uh, produce that's being produced in this country, which in turn feeds worldwide. You have the same thing uh, with the friends in Australia. So when did this all start? Well, it all started back in the garden. In the garden, the devil deceived Eve and was going to take charge and God kicked him out and we would become a tainted people. That was the origin of the Antichrist. That was the beginning of the end. Well, I think we're coming closer to a climax. And then the question always comes up, and I want to touch about this. Is the Bible out of date? No, the Bible isn't out of date. Society is out of date. You see, the Bible is not a social book. The Bible is socially acceptable. It is a lifestyle. It has been predict it predicts what's going on and what's coming. We can look at it exactly that way. The predictions will be true. And the person that says, well, I don't believe that, you really don't make any difference that you don't believe it. How can you believe in something you didn't believe that existed in the first place? You know, that's an oxymoron. The Bible says that you have a, a conscience you have a spirit of faith that is buried in you. It's always been said that in a foxhole, there are no unbelievers. When the chips are down, the first thing people want to do is pray. And I've been to many, many places, and I've seen this happen. People that profess themselves to be a total unbeliever in something that they can't believe in, how can you believe in something you don't believe in in the first place? It's an oxymoron. And the first thing you want to do is say, would you pray for us? Would you pray for me? We set spiritual things in motion, positively and negatively. I'm going to share some verses with you. And the reason for this pandemic, pandemic, is it God's judgment? I don't know. Is it the, the global warming, the cycle? I don't know. Is it man's carbon monoxide uh, problems? We saw when they closed, shut down parts of California, then we, the videos were clear, the fog was clear from the automobiles. Is that what's causing it? I don't know. But we know that something is causing it. In Ephesians 5.21 it says we need to be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Christ is in charge of every single thing around us. Christ is in charge of everything that goes on from the, from the fog and the smog all the way down to the last tomato plant growing in your garden. To every drought. He allowed it to happen or did it just happen? Have we set things in motion that we don't want to set in motion? Well, the more positive things we set in motion, the better it goes. Psalm 36, 1 says, Transgression speaks to the ungodly within his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes. You know, 
it was some of these thugs threw bricks in the stores and lit stores on fire, lit the police stations on fire, and did all of these foolish things. The Bible says that the land will reject us. Who is going to rebuild the closed factories? Who's going to rebuild the burned out stores? Who's going to rebuild those things? Nobody. You know why nobody is? Nobody has the ability individually to build a dam or build a store. It was a collective effort of many people. If you're listening to this and you think you can go into a community and you're going to build 10, uh, 25 or 50,000 square feet of shopping space and stock it, how are you going to do it? I've been in business all my life. I can't do it. How are you going to do it? How is anybody going to do it? It won't happen because it was created by a collective effort. It was organized by a collective effort. It was set in motion by God putting people together to create a store, a post office, a police station. Granted, there's some discrepancies and there's some evil that has taken place in all of these. We are fallen people. Sometimes I go to church and I'm the only sinner in church, but that's okay. Because you know what? I'll go to hell and praise God if that's where it's going. We need to praise God in all things and we need to recognize that we are fallen people. But the land is rejecting us. And it says that it will vomit the inhabitants out of it. How many abortions do we have to have before the land says, hit the road? How many people do we have to cheat before the land says, hit the road? How many bribes do we have to start? In Daniel 9, 4, it says, After the Lord expelled them before you, you are not to say yourself, to yourselves, The Lord caused me to enter it and possess this land because of my righteousness. You didn't go there because you were righteous. You went there because God gave it to you. You didn't build your business because you were righteous. You built your business because God gave it to you. You didn't create a factory or a power plant because of your righteousness. You built it because God gave it to you and gave you the creative ability to do it. We got it backwards, folks. We think we're in charge. We're not. Jesus Christ is in charge. But he said that. The Lord expelled them before you. So don't say to yourselves, the Lord caused me to enter in and possess this land because I was <clears throat> righteous. Repent, lest you burn in hell. God gave it to us. God gave everything that you have. And God will give you more. Take care of what God has given to you because he will take it from you. Take care of what God has given you because he will take it from you. Here's some, here some things. And I want to show, I want to show you this. We have to, we have to recognize that the devil has led us in all of these stupid things that we've done. You know, the level of stupidity, here's the level of stupidity. You're in, a, you're in an isolated community. You and your mother, and your father, and your grandparents, everybody kind of living in a few block area. And you go out and throw a brick through the wall and burn the grocery store. Did you ever think what that means? Where do you think your mother is going to shop tomorrow? How stupid. The devil caused you to do it. The devil set it in motion. Oh, then we got some guys with a hot rod coming down the road about 100 miles an hour. The kids, the dogs, the everything was running for the cover. Well, if somebody called the police, oh, we disbanded them. The devil set it in motion, and you bought into it. This craziness has gone all over the world. Let me, well, let's close the school and expect to invent something new. 
Where are you going to learn it from? Where are you going to learn to read and write? I've been in, I've been in third world countries. How much stupidity have we bought into? And I'm not saying the schools are 100% right, or the police are 100% right, or none of this is 100% right. We can change it from the inside, but we can't change it from the outside, because from the outside you got nothing left but a burned out shell. The mentality of that is if we blow up every power plant in the United States, the country will run better. The devil will tell you that. But the devil is lying to you. The devil is promoting his stupidity or his program, your stupidity for buying into it. Here's one that's really is a, and this really should make the national news, which it did. These guys set up a party and they found somebody that was positive for the virus. Then they took bets on who would get the virus at the party. Well, ironically, the guy that won the bet died. Who talked to him? Who talked to him? Satan. The devil. The devil himself. The devil. Satan. You see, and then we have Christian leaders that are turning their backs on God and say, God, why don't you do something? Christian leaders, why don't you repent? Why don't you get on your knees before the altar? I don't care what country you're in. Get on your knees before the altar because that's where it starts. You got problems in your life, get on your knees before the altar. Don't want to run, walk around whining. The Israelites whined for 40 years in the desert and all died in the desert because of their whining and complaining. They never got on their knees in front of the altar. Oh, I love this one. So we talk about the measure of stupidity. This is the crowning touch. We gotta have a, we gotta have a bailout. We gotta have another check. Fine, we burn the post office. How are you gonna get it? How foolish. How can we buy into the devil when he does this to us? And we have. You can't take, expect good things to come out of it, even though good things do come out of it. People are starting to learn that if they ever want another power plant or they ever want another grocery store, they're going to have to start looking up because God is going to have to raise up people with courage, with ability, creative ability to cause it to happen or it will never happen yes. mm -hmm. or it will never happen mm -hmm. well we could look at a lot of verses but I want to I want to touch a couple more here Exodus 23 8 says and you will not take a bribe because the bribe makes the sighted blind and ruins the words of the righteous how many countries around the world the politicians are being bribed the United States has multiple, multiple, I don't know what you call them, but they, they're in Washington to convince people how to lobbyists. vote. It's lobbyists. lobbyists, multiple lobbyists. They're paying them with, with trips. They're paying them with this. They're paying them with that. They're giving them special concessions. The people, are, the people are blinded as to what is happening around them. We need to turn back to God all over the world because God is going to give us the ability to govern our people. God is going to give us the ability to create new power plants, new stores. God is going to give us that ability, not man. It did not start with man. It started with God. He gave us the ability to create. In Genesis 1, 26, it says, you are created in my image. God is a creator and man is a creator. Jesus on the cross, when he said it was finished, he gave us the authority back that we lost in the garden. 
He gave us that authority back. And as a result, we can take that authority and we can change our countries, we can change our communities, we can change everything that we set our hand to. But we have to be willing to do it. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. And oh Lord, you know, can't imagine how many people are scared out of their wits over this thing. Well, you know what? If we were scared about heart attacks, we probably wouldn't eat like we do. If we were scared about cancer, we certainly wouldn't eat like we do. And there's a hundred other things we could be scared of. Mm -hmm. Why are we scared of this? Because the devil said you've got to be scared of it. Your chances of getting cancer or chances of dying of a heart attack are far greater than they'll ever be with the flu or the virus or any of these other things. We need to get rid of our fear and start looking up. We need to get rid of our fear and start saying, Lord, protect me. Show me what you want me to do. Give me revelation. Give me understanding. Give me courage to deal with these issues. In Hosea 12, 14, it says this. Ephraim has caused bitter provocation and his Lord will hold him responsible for his crimes and pay him back for his insults. Now stand up on the, on the platform and say, God, where are you? God didn't move. But your day will come. Tough preaching. But yet it's all in the Word of God. It's all in the Word of God. How many times can we abuse somebody until it's enough is enough? I was watching a lot of these videos, these police videos, and some of the some of the the detective shows and some of these different shows on television. How insulting will you be to a policeman before the policeman loses his cool? How insulting will he have to be to you before you lose your cool? Think about that. Think about that very seriously because all too often we think we can kick somebody else in the head until they're bleeding and they're not going to do anything. It don't work that way, folks. It don't work that way. We need to, we need to have consideration for each other. We need to submit one to the other. We need to, if you do something wrong and the police arrest you, that's your problem. Accept it. It's not a racist thing. It's not a sexist thing. It's a, a wrong thing. Well, he stopped me because I was going 80 miles an hour. He stopped you because you were violating the law. He didn't stop you because you were white, black, Spanish, Greek, Italian, English. He stopped you because you did something wrong. You see, we need to recognize that we can't, we can't completely ignore what's around us, but at the same time, we need to recognize that we are people. We are created in God's image. We can forgive, we can be tolerant, we can help each other, we can deal with issues at hand. Did God allow all this to happen? Well, that you can get into all kinds of judgments on that. But the reality of it is, in Numbers 21.6, there's many verses, but the Lord sent fiery serpents. The Lord sent. Did the Lord send the pandemic? Or did we cause the pandemic to happen? Or is the pandemic a result of the temperature cycle that we are in? Or is the temperature cycle that we're in a result of the sin of man? How many of us have ever gone to the altar and asked those questions? We will have the warmest, hottest year in the United States that we have ever had and we've broken record after record after record already. 
The question we all have to ask is why? I'll tell you this, the meteorologists, you know, I listened to, I listened to the weather and I, it's going to be a beautiful day. Fifteen minutes later, there's lightning, there's storms, there's thunder, and I'm thinking, what happened? So I go back to the weather report, it was still on the same, it's going to be a beautiful day. Folks, we need to start looking up. We need to start looking up because God created harmony in the garden. Harmony in the weather, harmony in the earth, harmony between people, between nations. Whether judgment comes from God or the judgment is created by ourselves, it's still judgment. You want to know judgment? Pick the biggest guy in town Go over there and kick him in the shins until he busts you in the nose. That's judgment. He got tired of it. Kick God in the shins until he busts you in the nose. He got tired of it. You're created in his image. It don't take a genius to figure that out, folks. Amen. Don't take, yeah, it'd be very smart to know that. If you don't, don't think it'll work, go and try it. Go and try it. Wow. Wow. No one likes their motives questioned. That's real bad when you start questioning somebody's motive. <clears throat> but if your motive is to get more than your neighbor, if your motive is to get one up on the other person, if your motor is to motive is to accelerate yourself and stomp on somebody else. Nobody likes that when they question that. Go to the mirror. Go to a mirror. If you don't have a mirror, go to a water pail. If you don't have a water pail, go to the creek. If you don't have a creek, go to the pond. And look at that person that you see there and ask the question, what is my motive? What is your motive? It's scary because all too often our motive is to be one better than the other guy. And it has nothing to do with what's going on. Are the churches being judged? Well, you can read Ezekiel 34. I'm not going to go there because we're rapidly coming to a close. But Ezekiel 34 says that God is going to judge the churches. God is going to judge the churches. Are you ready for it? Is your congregation ready for it? Is your Bible study ready for it? Is your Bible study ready for God to come to you and take the book out and say, hey, this is what I told you guys to do. And this is what you're doing. We got to say this. Scripture is either 100% true or nothing is true. And we have to take it in its total context. It has to be full gospel. It's not, I don't believe this or I don't believe that. You're lying to yourself. Go to that mirror. Well, I'm lying to myself. I don't want to be that way. You are lying to yourself. Your call, everybody's called to a different calling. But don't deny what the scripture of God tells you. Well, I'm going to, I just want to mention this for in passing here. Diseases are paramount and new diseases will keep coming because of the changes in the cycle. God created the earth and God may well have created the cycles. I share one, 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 one testimony of cycles. The Ebola thing broke out in the church in a community in Africa. And the pastor there called me and said, <coughs> what do I do? I says, we're going to pray that no Ebola touches the people in your church. And lo and behold, several weeks later, I got a text from him or I got a call from him. And he said, we did not lose one person in the church. But the community was devastated. 
we need to start looking up. What happens if your cell phone went down? Go to the mirror and look at that person. What would you do if your cell phone went down? Go to your computer, look at that computer, and what would happen if you put an X right through the middle of it? Or the tower? What would happen if the temperature goes up six or seven degrees in the agricultural plant of the world? Starvation would be paramount. The top 10 years of high temperatures, 2016, 19, 15, 17, 18, 14, 10, and 13, were all tied. And it looks like 2020 will be the highest of ever. Of ever. The solution rests. <clears throat> Matthew 6.33 says, First seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. <clears throat> Luke 13.3 says, But unless you repent, you too will all perish. And Exodus 23.25 says, But if you serve the Lord your God, he will bless your bread and your water and, re and will remove sickness from your midst. There are three verses for all of us to listen to. We need to start looking up. We've terrorized ourselves by looking at what's going on around us. We need to bless ourselves by looking what God has in store for us. Amen. Father, I pray for all the people that have watched this, this, movie, or this video. I ask that you would touch each one. Bless them. Bless their families, bless their coming and going, bless everything that they set their hand to. And Father, they're going to give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.